So um, I know one of the primary things y'all wanted to talk about, vaccines, the importance of masking. Um, how much of a demand do you think folks have for this type of stuff right now, the vaccines, the masking, et cetera, at this point in the pandemic? And how do you make sure that people understand the importance of this as we reach almost two years since it started? No, absolutely. Uh, we continue to uh, to stress the importance of all the tools we have. You know, these tools that we didn't have uh, when the pandemic started almost three years ago, two years ago. Uh, we're beginning our third year now. Um, we have these three authorized, two approved uh, vaccines uh, that are free and keep people safe. They prevent uh, severe disease and hospitalization. And so we continue to encourage people that have not yet gotten vaccinated to get vaccinated. Not only that, we've seen the importance of getting that boost uh, in Omicron. Omicron um, took a little bit of a hit on some of the vaccine effectiveness, and so we needed to add that third dose to make sure that uh, Americans were protected uh, from the Omicron variant. And so we've continued to encourage the boosts as well. Uh, masks are important uh, in, in, in certain settings, and we continue to stress the, uh, the availability of these N95s that we've uh, made available from the Strategic National Stockpile. Um, we've, uh, the president promised 400 million, and we've shipped 240 million now to uh, grocery stores, pharmacies, uh, federal health centers, where people can pick up a mask for free and have it available, high-quality N95 mask available for when they need it. Uh, so we continue to talk about these tools. We've now made tests available. As you know, the president announced a purchase of 500 million tests that are being shipped out to American households, uh, and uh, we've seen uh, quite a bit of uptake in demand of those tests. And then the president ordered another, another 500 million tests that so we would have them available when we need them, should we need them uh, in the future. So uh, we continue to, to, to remain very prepared and are pleased to see uh, the current uh, decrease in Omicron cases and hospitalizations, but remain vigilant for whatever may come next. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, it seems like there's a lot of cautious optimism at this point based on the way that the trends are going. And we're also seeing across the nation and also in our Charlotte region, um, a lot of localities starting to remove their mandates. Um, I guess, what can you say as far as being at this point in the pandemic, um, folks going, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, we were told to get N95s and now we're being told we don't necessarily have to mask. What's your message to folks? when they see all these signs? Well, we continue to feel very good about the, the decrease in cases, but this um, virus has been anything but predictable, and we want to continue to have these tools available to the American people when and should we need them next. Um, the mask mandates have been up to local communities. Uh, we've let uh, states and localities make those decisions. The CDC has offered guidance and will continue to evaluate their current guidance in light of uh, the diminishing cases. They'll be looking at guidance across uh, several aspects, but uh, we continue to, and I'll, I'll leave it to them to make those decisions, but we uh, have encouraged people to, uh, to know that these tools are available and to access them when they need them, should they need them in the future. Um, you just talked about the importance of boosters a few moments ago and, and also just getting the full vaccine series. Um, for those folks who are already fully vaccinated, boosted, and maybe are a couple months past that boost, um, are you preparing for a fourth dose and rolling that out? I mean, should be, people be thinking about this at this point? Well, you know, these vaccines are new and we're continuing to watch the data come in to understand how long the protection lasts. Uh, several different studies are starting to come out and we're evaluating those. Right now, we feel very comfortable uh, with that third dose and it strongly encourage folks to get that boost. It'll protect them against the Omicron variant. And if additional doses are needed in the future, we'll continue to watch that science and track the data and make decisions as needed. All right. Um, as far as um, masks go, to go back to that, um, do you think at this point people should go ahead and get their N95s if, for example, they've just been relying on the cloth masks at this point, even though we do have the numbers going down and seemingly Omicron is giving less severe um, symptoms for, for a lot of people, but not all? Even with the receding cases, there are lots of uh, situations where it makes sense to have a mask and to have access to a high quality N95 mask. So for those that have been relying on the cloth mask and would like to have access to that N95 uh, high quality mask, uh, we strongly encourage um, 
uh, the people of Charlotte to pick them up at their uh, pharmacies and grocery stores, uh, and we'll continue to make them available as needed. Um, so that uh, continues to be one of the tools that we're pleased to provide the American people, and as case counts go down, we'll evaluate when the best time to use those masks might be. We are seeing um, some of our state agencies start to move closer to the at-home testing phase of things, if you will, and kind of scaling down the traditional, if you will, you know, wait in line, PCR testing. Um, I am wondering, you know, some folks were, were getting viewer messages say that they're still waiting for their free kits. Um, so I'm just wondering what the status of that is. Are there some people that are still, you know, not getting theirs and you're still rolling these out? Well, we continue to be, to be very impressed with the U.S. Postal Service and how quickly they've been able to turn around most testing orders. We have prioritized 20% of every day's tests. It will go to hard hit, hard reach, hard, the hardest hit and harder to reach communities uh, to make sure that they're equitably distributed across the country. Um, but even with that, we're seeing uh, orders turning around in 72 hours. So strongly encourage folks that have not yet received their test to sit tight, they're coming. Um, and uh, the U.S. Postal Service is doing everything it can to get them moving as quickly as possible. I believe over 85% of the tests that were ordered on the first day have been shipped and delivered, uh, and they're continuing to send millions more each day. When the rollout was first announced, we heard um, that you know just to start there would be that that four test limit any update on you know maybe another round or eventual a scale up well we've been lucky to have these 500 million free tests available and we are looking at what the demand is uh, and what we might do with tests that aren't ordered in this first round with a strong potential of uh, letting uh, american households order another set those decisions have not been made yet but certainly under consideration along with uh, you know some other uses for these tests, but that is definitely one of the possibilities and we'll continue to evaluate uh, what makes the most sense in light of the case counts and data in front of us. Any word um, on N95s for children? Because I remember the initial mask giveaway was just for adults. Absolutely. We are in the process of procuring and manufacturing those tests, we, uh, those, those masks. We did not have pediatric uh, N95 masks in the strategic national stockpile because there were not uh, ones that were uh, approved by NIOSH or FDA. It was just one of those gaps in our stockpile uh, uh, tools. And so we have uh, gone about the process of uh, manufacturing them and we will be delivering them as soon as they're available. All right. Um, I know we're coming up on our time. Is there anything you want to add that I didn't ask? Well, I really have appreciated this conversation. You know, one of the most important things is how uh, better prepared we are now than we were at the start of this pandemic. We've got these vaccines available, therapies to keep people that have gotten sick out of the hospital. We have tests available free of charge to American households. And we have these uh, N95 masks that we've talked about that folks can pick up at their pharmacies and grocery stores, community health centers uh, free of charge. So we continue to make these tools available uh, for the American people and continue to have conversations. You know, we have a public education campaign uh, that we're currently in the process of making sure people understand what tools we have and uh, working with them in their communities to make sure they can take advantage of them. And we'll continue to do our part as long as uh, we're in this pandemic. Is there any sort of centralized point where people can go to find this information? Uh, we're in the process of, uh, of putting everything uh, together, but for the test, there's covidtest.gov, uh, there's the vaccine finder, there's also a therapeutics finder, and of course, CDC has access to all of the, you know, their guidances on their website. It would be nice if everything were all in one place and we'll work towards that soon. All right. Um, I think that's all for me, um, and we've hit time, so thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you.